I gotta tell you something right now, so get in your seat and I'll take a bow. Cause we gotta go and start the flick off to the shelf to pick, pick, pick. Oh, we have a show to put on your screen. Trust me now, cause my work's pristine. It's time to critique a classic movie. Let's have some fun and make it groovy. It's movie criticism of movies, yeah. I said 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 it's. Oh, um, <laughs> hello everyone, Evan J. Sims here. I'm, j I'm just reading this book for fun and waiting for my next review to start. Oh, oh, goody, 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 goody. It's time to start the review. Well, so in this episode, folks, I'll be talking about Wish, the newest animated feature for Walt Disney Animation Studios. Wish is an all-new CGI animated musical fantasy film from Disney's main animation studio. It mainly follows a 17-year-old girl named Asha, who is aspiring to become the apprentice of King Magnifico, a powerful sorcerer and the ruler of the Kingdom Roses. However, after trying to give a first impression on the king, Asha learns that Magnifico is using his magic to steal Roses' citizens' wishes and imprison them in his castle. Even though Magnifico says that he promises that every wish will be granted by his powers, he really only grants the wishes that he says can be granted. After discovering the secret, Asha vows to retrieve the stolen wishes from Magnifico and return them to the citizens of Roses with the help of her friends, her goat Valentino, and an anthropomorphic star literally called Star. But the deceitful king is on their trail. Now, I guess you're all wondering, uh, why exactly am I reviewing a Disney movie even though I'm literally trying to work against uh, the supreme leader of that company. Well, uh, that's none of your business. A schedule's a schedule, no exceptions. And besides, this film may actually be good. I just really doubt it. So, what do I think of Disney's Wish? Well, to my surprise, it's actually good! Woohoo! It is good! Yes! This is a huge apology for the, the atrocity that was last season's Strange World. Now, the most common criticism I've heard from most critics is that Wish heavily borrows and steals from past other Disney movies, but adds n no soul or new elements to it. Well, I guess I could kind of see those unoriginal elements, uh, but I wouldn't say that there isn't any it would make the film so-called soulless. And plus, I don't think it's entirely a bad thing to, to steal from other products. You can do that as long as A, you execute that cliche well, and B, add some of your own spice to it. Because here's the thing. Um, this movie is a lot less source than that of most of the Disney live-action remakes. And that is because unlike that of the remakes, this movie is not boring, and you can, you can tell that there is some passion behind it. Anyway, I do just have one problem with this movie, and that is the pacing. You see, while the pacing in Wish is almost perfect, there's a small but major chunk near the end of the second act that I feel is missing. I won't spoil it, but you'll get what I mean once you see the film yourself. I'm going to give four points to this movie's content. Asha is an incredibly insecure and awkward teenage girl of our lead character, but she doesn't ever come across as annoying or insufferable. Some may complain that she is a bit too similar to Anna from Frozen 
or Mirabelle from Encanto, but like I said, it's okay to steal from other stories, especially if they're from the same owner or creator. I mean, there is no law saying, no ripping off other stories. I mean, that law just would sound silly. Uh, King Magnifico is an awesome villain. Probably the best Disney villain yet since Mother Gothel. I think what makes him really stand out the best is that he doesn't really see himself as evil, but rather the relatable hero of his own personal story. What also is really special, really helps, is that Magnifico is given some kind of insecurity that adds depth to his character and makes him quite the control freak. Star is an okay silent character. He's not particularly hilarious or anything, but he does contribute his does his part in the plot and help is really helpful to the heroes. Asha's Goat Valentino, however, is my only issue with this movie's characters. You see, after just first meeting Star, uh, Valentino is given some the ability to talk. And well, he does have a big case of verbal diarrhea for the most part of the film, as he tries desperately hard to make the audience laugh, even though his jokes very rarely land. I'm going to give four points to the characters of this film. The animation for which is, well, half good. Let me explain. So, um, even though the, the character animation is very fluid, expressive, and full of the trademark Disney animation personality, much most like other Disney animated films recently, um, the rendering of the animation is where it falters for me. You, you see, the, the characters really don't blend well with the backgrounds or settings, and it feels so reminiscent of Disney Junior Sophia the First. Now, I have heard a couple of reviewers say that this kind of bad rendering of animation was intentional as it was to give the movie a sort of fairy tale like feel to it. So, I, I might be making a misguided interpretation here. If you disagree with me and have your own thoughts, please let me know in the comments section below and I'll try to take your opinion into account. But as of right now, I'm going to give three points to the animation of this movie. Ariana DeBose voices Asha, and she does a pretty darn good job at sounding convincingly awkward and insecure. It really fits her character well. Now, when I heard that Chris Pine would be doing the voice of King Magnifico, I really did not like that idea. However, after I finally saw the film, Pine proved me all the more wrong. He is terrific in this role. He, sa he first sounds very regal and elegant at the film's start. Then, as the movie slowly goes on, Pine starts to, to sound more slimier, hammier, and just plain more evil. Valentino, with the speaking voice, is voiced by Alan Tudyk, who I personally consider the John Ratzenberger of Disney Animation Studios right now, if you know what that means. As talented as Tudyk is as a voice actor, he is pretty bad in this role, because he makes Valentino even more insufferable by making him talk so much and giving him this semi-obnoxious voice. I'm going to give four points to the voice acting. Now, yes, the music score, which was composed by Dave Metzger, uh, is pretty hard to notice and get, or get captivated by it for the most part. However, the saving grace for the music category of this film has to be the songs. Like any, most other Disney films of animation th these years, the songs in this movie are tremendous. They are catchy, they are fun, and full of life. I think the standout song here has to be Magnifico's villain song, This Is The Thanks I Get. It is by far the catchiest and most rhythmic song out of all the films and the most memorable. I heard I heard from my sister Audrey that some people have been it's slowly getting viral on the internet and I can see why it definitely deserves that. I give 5 points to the music.
In conclusion, I honestly don't even get where critics are coming from with Wish. Yes, it does steal and borrow from a lot of other Disney films, but I don't think that should be an immediate criticism. And keep in mind, too, that a lot of the most acclaimed Disney animated movies in the past have been borrowed from much older sources. As for the movie itself, this is a very entertaining, lively, and overall satisfying experience that deserves so much more respect for what's right. Wish has received a total of 20 points out of 25, earning it a B+. So, have you seen Disney's Wish? If not, do you want to or not and why? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you enjoy this review video, then feel free to like, subscribe, and or share. What the heck, man? What's taking that ferry so... long? Surprise! <gasps> Luke Lixar. But... but... I, I thought I'd defeat you at the end of Movie Criticism Season 1. Oh yeah, you did, Evan. But you didn't destroy me, you know? Well, well then goodbye, Luke. See you on the other side. <sighs> yeah, it must really suck that you don't have your crocs with you. You can't banish me, you can't banish me. Hey, stop taunting me, okay? I've already suffered enough, okay? Now, where is the next fairy? Oh, you mean this fairy? The, the next fairy? Luke, I need that fairy. Now! Oh, no you don't, Evan. Not until you let me live in your house for all eternity. Luke, I've already told you, no. Oh, oh well then. I guess I might as well leave. And then I'll summon Supreme Leader Mickey Mouse to your station. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't, Luke. You, you can't. Oh, yes, I can, chump. Now, anything you want to say before I go? Look, Luke. I'll tell you what. I'll let you stay in my house for life if you can help me defeat Supreme Leader Mickey. And why exactly should I listen to you? Well, why aren't you in your little demon dimension right now? Just so you- just because you want to taunt me? Oh, uh, that's actually a good question. Let me look. I'll be right back. You jerk! You caused Supreme Leader Mickey to conquer my dimension! Now where am I to live now? <sighs> oh, alright. I'll help you defeat Mickey. But no real promises. Got it? Got it. Well, here's your fairy. Now, Evan, what do we do? Supreme Leader, we found Mr. Sims. Yeah, we found his entire base. Good. Now go in there and find Mr. Sims himself. And make sure that anyone who stands in our way is vanquished. All of them! <laughs> <laughs>